Hello viewers, welcome to the Editorial Analysis by Drishti IES. In this section, we regularly take editorials from various newspapers and news portals for a better understanding of various issues happening in India and around the globe. Dear viewers, in this section, we first try to link the editorial with our UPSC syllabus. Then we go analytical in order to understand some key points and at last some important concepts. Dear viewers, we truly hope that you like this initiative taken by Drishti IES and your feedbacks are important for us. So kindly feel free to give your important feedbacks in the comment section. So without any further delay, let's commence our session. Dear viewer, this video is available in Hindi as well. If you wish to watch it, please visit our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS. For your convenience, the link for this video in Hindi has been provided in the description below. Today's editorial is taken from The Hindu published on 2nd March 2021. The title of today's editorial is Cold Comfort. If we try to summarize today's editorial, we can say that Pakistan avoided the blacklist, but it should counter the issue of terrorism. If we try to link today's editorial with our UPSC syllabus, we can link it with Polity, Constitution, Governance and International Relations. Some key points from today's editorial. To Islamabad's deep disappointment, the Paris-based 39-member Financial Action Task Force has decided once again to keep Pakistan on its grey list of countries under increased monitoring, giving it another three months to complete its commitments. Now, viewers, like we all know that Pakistan has been serving a very long time in the grey list of the FATF, that is the Financial Action Task Force. Now, when we are talking about 39 members, so there are a total of 39 members where India, China, they also are a member of the FATF. Now, FATF actually has ordered Pakistan that it would be taken on to grey list because they have got two patterns there. One is the grey list criteria where a country has to face several sanctions and the other one is the blacklist criteria under which there shall be no kind of aid or help that will be provided to Pakistan. So the FATF had ordered Pakistan long back in 2018 that it has to work upon 27 points in order to fight against terrorism. Pakistan regularly has failed to come achieve or you can say complete those 27 points. In the last meet when it the meeting of FATF happened, Pakistan complied to almost 27 out of 27 plans, it complied 21 points. The most important thing that is to be noted here is that the reason why so much pressure is being put on Pakistan is because Pakistan is known as a hub of terrorism. Many terrorist organizations, many terrorist activities are planned in Pakistan and Pakistan has not done considerable in order to stop or curb those activities. After being removed from the list in 2015, Pakistan was put back on it in June 2018 and handed a 27-point action list to fulfill. On Thursday, FATF President Marcus Player announced that although Pakistan has made significant progress, it had three remaining points of the 27 that were only partially addressed notably all in the area of curbing terror financing. Now, when the meeting of the FATF took place on Thursday, the president of FATF, Mr. Mark Marcus Player, he came up with a statement where he said that Pakistan has made some significant progress towards achieving all the points that are man mentioned in the 27 action point list. However, there are still three areas where Pakistan needs to do a tremendous amount of work. Now, if you speak about those three areas, they are more or less associated with curbing the financing that is given, that is done to the terrorist organizations. The present scenario. The body listed the remaining tasks, demonstrating terror funding prosecutions accurate, effective and dissuasive, and thoroughly implementing financial sanctions against all terrorists designated by the United Nations Security Council which include the lashkar e taiba founder Hafiz Saeed, jaish e mohammed chief Masood Azhar, other leaders of terror groups in Pakistan and those belonging to Al-Qaeda. So the tasks which actually were left, they were basically 
they have to pakistan are supposed to demonstrate it practically it has to be live that yes see these are the avenues where we have taken several initiatives and we have actually curbed absolute terror financing or terror funding from our state implementation has to be done with respect to cancel out all the fundings which the terrorist organizations are receiving on the name of ngos and at last it has to make sure that the various terrorist leaders such as hafiz said masood azhar etc strict actions are required and not on the charge of just terror financing but also on the charges of terror planning etc subsequent actions is to be taken on all those terrorists who are right now present in pakistan and they are operating in favor of al qaeda whole and soul you can understand this entire situation in one word that fatf wants to track down each and every terrorist activity that is been taking place in pakistan they want a complete end to the problem of terrorism and that problem of terrorism is because of only one reason all these terrorist organizations are getting financial aid from some place or the other and that's the reason they are able to plan and they are able to cause so much trouble so if a complete action if a proper action is taken against these organizations there will be an end to the problem or to the menace of terrorism pakistan's former interior minister internal minister rahman malik has protested that decision most vociferously even suggesting that the fatf should be taken to the hague given that other countries that have completed nearly all the points on their task lists have been dropped from the grey list now when the decision came from fatf there were many people in pakistan who were absolutely against the decision taken by fatf and one such dissatisfaction came from the former internal affairs minister mr rahman malik he protested that the various countries who in the past have followed or have implemented the action point plan that was given to them not even completely all those countries have been dropped from the grey list category so why pakistan is been made to suffer in the grey list category he also cited a recent report that calculated pakistan has lost 38 billions because of its time on the grey list okay that time was from 2008 to 2015 and from 2018 to 2000 like present 2021 so according to one report he also said that pakistan so far has lost 38 billion us dollars and who will actually compensate that so there is no point in compensation why should anyone compensate to pakistan when you are yourself involved in causing so much trouble in the entire world and specifically in india so there is no point of compensation and such opinions they are not to be presented they are not to be even heard they are not to be accepted because whatever pakistan is doing pakistan always knew what are going to be the results for such kind of activity in which pakistan is involved it is cold comfort or islamabad that the fatf chief also ruled out downgrading pakistan to blacklist as he said that pakistan has made progress on its commitment and this is not the time to contemplate the extreme step this would mean enhanced sanction sanctions and restrictions as iran and north korea face at present now something that pakistan should be happy about is that at least pakistan is not placed into the blacklist category countries like iran and north korea they are already present in that they are facing tremendous amount of sanctions absolute sanctions all over the cross no financial aid is given to them so pakistan should be happy and pakistan should do as much as possible in order to make sure that it is taking every proper step in order to curb the issue of terrorism mr player advised pakistan to complete the remaining task by june 2021 when the fatf will meet again to vote on the same issue the fatf decide coincides with the first signs of a thaw between india and pakistan since 2016 now mr player has said that pakistan has got another 3 months in order to take action on the remaining 3 points which have been addressed also it is for the first time that fatf has said something in favor of pakistan and it actually coincides with 
India also has resembled the same by saying that several, some kind of initiatives have been taken by Pakistan in order to curb the issue of terrorism. The way forward, the decisions of the Director General of Military Operation also on Thursday to strictly observe the ceasefire agreement at the LOC and revelations in the media, which have not been contradicted by the government. The National Security Advisor Ajit Doval has been in touch with senior officials, including the Pakistan Air Chief, are both significant. See, India is also carefully observing the ceasefire agreement that has been done between both the countries. Also, our National Security Advisor Mr. Ajit Doval is regularly in contact with the senior officials and that also include Pakistan's Army Chief. The joint statement also commits to resolve core issues that led to violence between the two sides, indicating more dialogue between India and Pakistan could be on the cards. There are no political trade, trade, cultural ties, sports at present. Now, see, under such a situation, it is quite important that we have to see that we have to address the issues, the core issues, because of which the violence has been caused between both the countries. It is to be remembered that it's been a very long time that both the countries have got zero ties with each other, be it political, be it related to trade, be it related to culture, be it related to sports. India has boycotted Pakistan on every front. Pakistan's next step on the FATF directive to successfully prosecute terrorists and terrorist financers identified by the groupings are in its own interest. See, if Pakistan works out on such activities, if Pakistan takes proper action over all those who are involved, all those who are culprit, all those who are involved in various terror activities, it is at last going to help Pakistan. Terrorism will not help. Terrorism will not solve the issue at all for Pakistan. It is the growth, development, the financial aid. Now, it's high time Pakistan should think about its people. Pakistan should think about its economy. Only then, things can be better. Any proposed New Delhi Islamabad engagement in the next few months would get a much needed boost if Pakistan traverses that la this last mile on the FATF grey list, addressing India's main grievance on the cross-border terror that emanates from its soil. See, if anything that Pakistan wants with India, if Pakistan really wants to have some kind of relationship with India, it is high time that it has to cover that remaining one remaining mile which is left in that 27 action plan. Only then India will sit on table in order to address the issues. Pakistan is suffering a lot. Take any example, take any example. Without India's support, without India being the neighbor, the primary neighbor, the most important neighbor, Pakistan can get a lot of many benefits, but only in one condition if Pakistan decides, if Pakistan declares that yes, it is ready to take every sort of action against the terror activities. If it does not happen, then it is going to be Pakistan's loss. And also, India will keep on pressing the issue of terrorism that is actually starting in the soil of Pakistan. So it is high time that Pakistan should address if it really wants to have some international reputation and if it really wants to think about its people. So viewers, uh, this was with today's editorial analysis. Now, uh, several questions that can be framed with reference to today's editorial is uh, in preliminary examination, they might ask you about grey list and the blacklist. They can ask you about which of the following is not a member of FATF, right? So you can focus upon such issues. So viewers, I hope you liked today's analysis. Thank you very much.